In today's video, we're going to be touching up cabinet doors. This is something that happens quite frequently. If you've had cabinet doors for a couple of years now, you may see where you've worn away the finish around the knob. First thing you want to do is completely clean off the area. I like to use paint thinner because there's a lot of grease in kitchen cabinet doors. So you want to use paint thinner, a 180 grit foam sanding pad, and paper towels for this process. So first thing we're going to start with is adding some mineral spirits to one of the paper towels. This way we can go ahead and actually wash off a lot of the grease, the residues, foods, cleaning solvents, you name it. There's a lot of things on kitchen cabinet doors that people don't realize that they're applying to them or have over the years. Make sure you get into the grooves. You want to make sure you get all of the residual grease away from that area because that is the most touched area of any cabinet door. Now one of the things I do like to do is to take a look at the surface there. You can kind of see there's an indentation from the finish being still present near the knob and where it's not, uh, uh, where it's worn away. So while it's still somewhat wet from the mineral spirits, I'll go ahead and start scuffing. One thing you'll notice that when you do this, you'll get actual chunks of the grease rolling up from the sandpaper onto the surface. This is a good sign. That means you're getting everything completely cleaned off that just wiping with mineral spirits would not achieve. You definitely want to listen for almost a squeak sound. That'll tell you that the surface is completely free and clear of any creases, silicones, or anything else whenever your finger starts to actually kind of grip across the surface of the wood. Then you just want to make sure that the finish and the wood, the bare wood that's shown here, are completely leveled out. Otherwise, you'll see that later when you go to tone it and finish it. Then go ahead and wipe it clean with mineral spirits. So you can see here a little bit of that raised area from the existing finish. So we want to go ahead and just scuff that a little bit more. What you do in this process is called cross hatching. It's almost like a hashtag. You go 45 degrees left, 45 degrees right. And what you're doing is leveling out the finish to the bare wood, trying to hide it. You're just trying to feather it. Next, we're gonna tape off the majority of the panel we do not want to actually spray. And the best thing to do is to actually find a line on the door. In this case here, we have mitered corners. These are great because your eye naturally goes towards mitered edges or lines in the wood. And so if there's a difference in finish, it's much easier to hide whenever you're using the natural structural of the door. First, we're going to start with yellow tape. This is Kling Spore 777 Gold. I like this the most for a pre-finished surface. Reason for that is because it doesn't have a lot of pull on it. You can leave it on for 15 days, leave it in the sun. It's an automotive tape, so it's a little bit more expensive, but it works killer for existing finishes. And you don't need a whole lot if you use it correctly. So for this process, you'll need the roller tape and a razor blade. And I like to push my thumbnail into where the, the molding meets the panel, so therefore I can get a nice clean cut with the razor blade. One thing I like to do is, is to have a razor blade handy because you can utilize it to make nice, sharp, clean transitions. And then once you've cut, you can actually use it to press down and then firmly adhere the tape to the surface. So how many coats of toner do you need for this project? Well, here is a step panel. What a step panel is, is five pieces of tape and you spray, remove tape. So in this case right here, I'm going about six to eight inches away. I'm gonna spray with the rattle can. Uh, now at first this rattle can did not come out as potent as it normally should. That's why I'm putting on two coats. But you pull the tape, you spray the first one and the second one, pull the tape, repeat the process. And what this does, it'll tell you how many coats you need to achieve the color on the door when you're matching it up. There's a real easy way to do it off the piece. I usually recommend a piece of paper, uh, a white melamine board, something where you can get a true color of the tone that the toner is. So let's talk about the genius of the Mohawk toner. Number one is down at the very top of your aerosol can, you'll find a black dot. 
That black dot represents the direction that the nozzle should be spraying. So if your nozzle is not arrowed that direction, turn it. And the reason for it is simple. Inside of every aerosol can, there is a straw. And that straw comes down to the very bottom, usually in a corner. So here, if we were to draw the straw, it'll end where my thumb is. If I turn the can towards my thumb and then follow back up, that's where the black dot is. And what that is for is to show you which direction to constantly use the can so you have a constant finish the whole time. I like using the Tone Finish 101 series for this particular door. The difference between 101 and 100 Mohawks is that there's more opaqueness in the 101s than there is the 100s. The 100s are very fine dyes where the 101s have a bit more dye a bit more color to them so in this case here i've decided to use the 101 now one of the biggest things to remember when you're spraying these doors is to spray it at different angles not dramatic but enough to where you have the chateauans from the dye which is french for cat's eye follows you around as you move with the door so it's important to, you know, shoot it at different angles. Therefore, as you walk across the kitchen, that you don't see this stark color stand out at you when you're 90 degrees from the door and it looks lighter from 45 and 45 on opposite ends of the door. So when you're spraying the toner, be gentle with it. Don't try to apply heavy coats. This will slowly build up, but when it does, it builds up very quickly, especially two or three. That's why we had that step board earlier. You want to go down the rails and the styles of the door to evenly blend the color. As you can tell here, I put a little bit heavier right where it needed it and a little less away from that. So therefore, it didn't have a big stark contrast to it. Now, once this dries, and usually it's about five minutes, you can apply another coat. So you can do three coats within about 15, 20 minutes, and then let it dry for about an hour to make sure that the color is fully there before you decide to top coat. And don't apply too heavy. You, you, it's a toner. It's not a paint. So a toner is going to not look as if you added enough. So therefore you want to add more, you want to add more, but if you flood it, you're going to get sagging. You're going to get runs. So just be patient with it. A little goes a long way in several light coats. And here you can tell I'll turn it and really as you move the doors, if I was moving in the kitchen, it starts to disappear. It starts to remove itself as being a stark color change. And that's what you're looking for with a toner is just to add color without overdoing it. And this is what your door should look like unfinished. You'll want to put a clear coat on it. But before you do that, you're going to need to remove the tape. And when you do, you're going to find that there's overspray and there's areas of original finish from the tape that was applied here and here so what you need to do is blend this before you top coat if you top coat you will definitely see a line so all you do is take that same 180 foam sanding pad you had earlier very light pressure and all you're going to do is blend lightly scuffing until all of the white kind of starts to disappear And right when you start getting close to that, you want to start slowing down and really take a look at it because you could go too far because now you're still on original finish with a little bit of overspray. Now, because we use tape and we didn't mask off the entire door, and there's a reason for that that I like to not do the entire door, is that you use a lot less toner and it blends a lot easier. But all you do is wipe it down with your hand to see if it blends in. Then once you're finished with this, you clean off the door and what we'll do is spray the entire surface of the door with one real light final toner coat. And what this will do is blend everything together. So therefore all of our lines, all of our easements with the tape, everything will kind of just blend together, but you're not adding so much color to the door that it, it looks different and darker in the final production run. And when you're all done, you may need to touch up certain areas. Mohawk offers an, a Promark stick, and this is basically a die in a marker. Think of a glorified Sharpie. And all you do is touch up the small areas, wipe with your finger, and it blends right in. No one knows any different. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you consider subscribing to the channel as we'll have more information on wood finishing. And I want to thank you again. This is Mike Z from Finishing with A to Zig.